everyone and welcome to our webinar series on use cases in federated API management. With this webinar series, we want to dive deeper into the world of federated API management, exploring its various use cases and benefits for organizations across industries. We have previously discussed the use cases moving to the cloud, unified API catalogs and just lately branch hubs. All of these you can watch on our YouTube channel and if you've already seen one of the previous webinars, you can skip the introduction in this video. To do so, you can simply use the chapters on this video that appear below. So today we're going to focus on group structures. But before we start with that, let's look at a quote from a recent market guide for API gateways from Gartner. And according to that report, gateways are becoming a commodity and organizations are looking for a management layer instead of just another gateway. This is absolutely in line with what Mark O'Neill, VP analyst at Gartner, talked about at the API days in Paris last year, in December. He mentioned that people want to do all kinds of things with their gateways and may have different requirements and needs they try to handle with the gateway. And this can result in a giant, what he called, gateway sorrows that is difficult to manage. And this is why there's a trend towards bring your own gateway, where organizations have their own gateways and only want a management layer on top of them. So let's look at how this might apply to your organization. Many companies have a similar setup, at least kind of, with various tools that work with or around APIs. And all these services are typically included in full lifecycle management, but most companies just don't utilize all of them. And like you can see here on that slide, this can result in multiple networks of mesh services that work together, making it really difficult to keep track of the source of truth for your APIs, because you just have all these different sources. And that's exactly where federated API management comes in. By implementing this single source of truth at the very center of your API landscape, you can keep track of the APIs and their execution directly tying into your API roadmap and strategic goal. goals. This core is essential as it is responsible for discovering, provisioning and securing all of the APIs. And the rest of the tools and services can be interchangeable, depending on whatever your team's needs and requirements are. And of course, as the gateway becomes a commodity like we've just heard from, for example, Mark O'Neill from Gartner, they too will be interchangeable and replaceable with the best fit for your scenario and with the best fit for your API strategy and your long-term roadmap. So when you look at it like this, bringing federated API management into your organization brings numerous benefits. And let's start on the very left-hand side of that slide. Of course, firstly, you can catalog and manage access on any platform. And you can provide discoverability, documentation, access to all APIs in one central location. So with that, you're basically right from the spot improving developer experience and you're driving adoption. And the central location allows developers to easily see if an API already exists, how it works, how you access it instead of searching multiple developer portals. And this shortens the time to value immensely and therefore improves the developer experience because they just don't have to waste their time searching for information and um, that's just not something they won't do. Secondly, you can automate APIs on any platform. You can provision, provision change and version APIs on any environment. You're simplifying the complexity and reducing your costs at the same time with this. And with federated API management, you can reduce the manual work and enable your platform or your operations team to handle these tasks. And last one on the right is you can match compliance and protect sensitive data because you can just ensure that security and compliance across all the APIs with one single set of policies and procedures that can be managed in that single um, source of truth. And this makes it way easier to monitor and enforce this security and compliance reducing your overall risk of security breaches and make sure that your APIs meet industry standards. And of course, 
When you think of the overall picture, you just have better visibility and control over your APIs with real-time analytics, with monitoring, and you can easily see how your APIs are performing and identify any issues, making it easier to optimize their performance and ensure that they meet the needs of your organization and your API roadmap. So, with that single source of truth at the center of your API landscape, that's exactly where the API control plane comes in. Because the APIDA API control plane empowers you to do exactly that, what we've just seen, and to utilize this concept of federated API management to its full potential. And the API control plane is the single source of truth that you can put at the very center, at the very heart of your API ecosystem. So with this, let's step into how this fits with the use case we're talking about today. And this is, of course, group structures. That's why we're here. So what are group structures, basically? Let's start with kind of an, of an introduction and, and definition. When you look at that picture, group structures are most commonly found in growing organizations where you have that one centralized group comprising several independent business units, which you have here at the bottom of the slides. And each of these business units typically focus on specific tasks and have their own set of business requirements. And as these organizations grow, these requirements can become more refined and tailored to the needs of individual units. So APIs play a crucial role in helping these business units create more efficient and automated processes. However, the API management layer is often operated and maintained by the central team of experts in central IT. And this is functioning as a separate business unit with its own goals and priorities. This is what you see at the very top. And this central IT team typically focuses on operational efficiency, whereas other business units are more concerned with addressing their specific business case requirements. Now, the, uh, the interesting part is that many times these business units have control over their IT infrastructure and decisions. So that's totally up to how the organization is built up. And uh, while they do have their own infrastructure, the group IT or central IT, whatever you call it, is responsible for ensuring that everyone adheres to the organization-wide guidelines and rules. So not so much about the, the infrastructure, but more about the overall governance. And they also handle tasks such as cost allocation and management, which can involve dividing costs between different business units when using shared resources like a single data center or a hybrid cloud approach, meaning accounting. So that's the two things we have at the top in central IT here, for our example. So like I just said, in this context of a group structure, this primary goal of central IT is to maintain the governance across the organization meaning making sure that everyone stays within the guidelines, no matter which business unit it is, and follows the organization's requirements and, and style guides, whatever you have. You can have multiple things here. And um, yeah, understanding this dynamic of group structures is really essential as we explore the potential challenges and solutions that are related to federated API management. And we'll see later in the webinar that um, these challenges often arise from conflicting goals and requirements among the different business units, as well as the complexities associated with managing multiple API management tools and integrating them into this one central IT management system. So the challenges I just talked about are very high level. And um, as we know, different business units of an organization have unique goals and requirements. We just had, uh, we just saw that and they must meet these requirements to be successful. And this diversity really can create conflicts when managing APIs and IT infrastructure. So let's look at what challenges we have here. We have, for example, like I just said, the overall biggest challenge are these conflicting goals and requirements of the different business units. And um, they do have the different set of objectives. They may not align with the goals of other units or even central IT. One business unit, for example, may prioritize a specific set of features or functionality, while another may just focus on cost effectiveness. 
And this can create friction when attempting to standardize and streamline API management across the entire organization. Second one, of course, is administration and maintenance overhead. So managing APIs across multiple business units often requires significant administration and maintenance efforts. Each unit may be using different tools, different technologies, different methodologies, tech stacks, whatever you can think of. And that leads just to an increased complexity and resource consumption. And this in turn can create a redundant work overhead that hampers overall operational, operational efficiency. Third one is you really want to use the best tool for the job. And with their own requirements, it is just crucial to ensure that they have access to the best tools and technologies to meet their specific needs. You don't want to have just any tool that just, well, fits by choice or randomly to someone's needs or one specific business unit, uh, but not for the others. However, providing the most suitable tools while maintaining group-wide standards and governance can be a quite complex and challenging endeavor. Because like I just said, you have to look at all the different needs and then find perfectly the one best tool for the job. But well, more realistically, it might just be more than one. Integration of multiple tools into central IT management systems, of course, another challenge that we face because with each of these business units possibly using different tools and technologies for API management, the central IT team faces the challenge of integrating these disparate, um, disparate systems into one cohesive world and one cohesive whole. And this integration process can be time consuming and even may require significant expertise, further straining the already limited resources that most of the IT teams face today. Um, next point is that you have to balance budgeting, human resources and business requirements. And that's exactly um, basically what we talked about in the last four points. Yeah, that, that's, that's one thing that comes out of this, because when you need to find the right balance between allocating budgets and managing human resources and meeting these diverse requirements of each business units, this can be really complicated and you have a conflict of priorities and you may even have resource constraints. Last but not least, you want an API catalog offering the whole spectrum of APIs. And ensuring that a comprehensive API catalog is available to all business units can be challenging as it, it, it uh, requires cataloging and maintaining APIs from various technologies various vendors you have may have different gateways and technology under there and this can lead to inconsistencies and difficulties in discovering and using the right apis for the job and to solve these challenges there are well quite some traditional approach approaches and i want to look at two of them today and these traditional approaches while they're not bad at all they do have the limitations and understanding these limitations will help us appreciate the benefits of federated API management as a solution later on. So let's look at the left hand side first and look at fully independent business units. What we have here is that we're allowing business units to independently choose their own technology stack. While this may seem to grant individual business units the freedom to meet their specific needs, it creates significant challenges in terms of governance and accounting. With all these varying technologies and tools in use, it becomes increasingly difficult for the central IT to enforce group-wide guidelines, track API usage, and allocate the cost effectively. Moreover, the inconsistency in the choice of technologies across business units may even lead to a lack of integration and collaboration between them, resulting in a lot of manual work. And this can further just hinder the organization's ability to innovate and quickly adapt to changing market conditions. So basically, there's probably a point where you can be left behind by your competitors. And um, that's what you see here. You have the governance accounting catalog, which you can't just really meet with the separate and independent business units, um, not really connected to the central IT to the top. 
The second approach that we're looking at at the right hand side is the enforcing of top down decisions. Where the group which we are, have on the top decides on a single technology stack for our business units. And while this approach can streamline operations and provide consistency across the organization, it often leads to a well, suboptimal experience for individual business units. The architectural decisions made by the group IT may not cater to the unique needs of each business unit, leading to inefficiencies and reduced agility. Furthermore, this top-down approach can create tension and conflicts between the business IT teams and the central IT team, because the business units may just feel that their autonomy and ability to make effective decisions for their team and their requirements are being compromised. And this is very quickly leading to resistance and friction against the centralized decision-making process. So what we see on that slide is it's basically more or less the other way around here. While with this approach, we really can enforce governance, we can look at accounting and have that catalog, it may not really be fit for the task and you may not really be able to empower your teams. So in the end, it's safe to say that these traditional approaches to managing group structures within organizations do have these limitations I just talked about in the beginning. And the independent choice of technology, technology stacks by business units can lead to challenges in governance, accounting and integration, while a top-down approach might result in suboptimal experiences and conflicts between central IT and individual business units. And these limitations just make it difficult for organizations to strike the right balance between operational efficiency and catering to the unique needs of each business unit. Thankfully, there is a solution for that. So let's look at how federated API management, meaning basically the API, API control plane, how this can address the challenges faced by organizations of group sectors. And you can see that picture on my slide. We have the central IT again, we have the business units, we have basically the same setting than before. There's just that one green layer that you have below central IT and that's the API, API control plane and that makes all the difference. So first, Let's discuss the unification of different technologies used by various business units. With federated API management, we can create a single control plane, the API, the API control plane here, that allows each business unit to utilize their preferred technology stack while maintaining a standardized interface for central IT. And this means that when business unit A comes to Central IT and says, I want to run all my stuff on AWS. They're perfectly fine to do that. And if then business unit B comes in and says, I just don't like AWS because that just doesn't fit my needs. That's also perfectly fine because they can take whatever gateway or technology they want. Um, may it be an Azure, may it be a Gravity, may it be a Kong, whatever they want to do, they can handle that with that single source of truth, with that control plane. So this enables business units to operate efficiently and meet their unique requirements while still adhering to group-wide standards and guidelines. Moving on, let's consider governance and accounting that we still have on the top in central IT. By implementing a federated API management solution like the APIDA API control plane, Central IT can oversee every request and APIs across all business units. It's all there. This is the single source of truth we've talked about in the beginning. And this not only ensures compliance with guidelines, but also enables accurate cost allocation and monitoring of resource usage. Consequently, Central IT can perform its essential functions without hampering the autonomy of business units. So how can all this help balance the needs of both business units and Central IT? By providing this unified platform that accommodates the technology preference of, uh, preferences of individual business units, you just have these efficient use of resources, you have these streamlined operations, you get rid of your manual work and can automate your stuff. And this not only reduces overhead and administration costs, but also ensures that each business unit has the tools and technologies they need to succeed. You basically set up your business units for success 
and you set up your central IT for success. In summary, you can just say this is a very powerful solution for organizations with group structures. And when you're offering that unified control plane, you just can cater to the diverse needs of business units while empowering central IT to maintain governance, accounting and overall op operational efficiency. And what you see on the right hand side here, that you have the API catalog across all the business units. That's what I just said. And that's um, in the picture here too. You do have all the APIs in there from all the business units. You see the little color blobs and central IT doesn't have to worry that anything's going amiss. So you can just help organizations with that approach to be more agile and adaptable to ever changing business landscapes. And um, you gain back flexibility and you gain back the possibility to quickly adjust and adopt new tools and methodologies as needed to just foster innovation and promote a culture of continuous improvement. So in conclusion, by implementing the API control plane and using that concept of federated API management, organizations with group structures can effectively navigate the challenges that arise from diverse business student requirements and central IT goals. And the solution just offers a seamless integration of multiple technologies, streamlined operation and efficient resource management, ultimately leading to a more successful and harmonious organization. So with what we've just seen, let's wrap this up and look at the overall benefits. And that is, of course, the enhanced collaboration of flexibility. You just foster a collaborative environment between the business units and central IT in allowing each unit to choose the technology stack that best meets their specific needs while maintaining a unified platform. And this flexibility allows organizations to adapt to changing business requirements and technological advancements, promoting innovation and ensuring the organization remains agile and competitive. Second one in the middle is that you streamlined operations and cost efficiency. By providing a unified control plane, this can help you streamline your operations across multiple business units, reducing the overhead associated with managing different technologies and administrative tasks. And this leads to improved operational efficiency, more accurate cost allocation, better resource utilization, and ultimately reducing the total cost of ownership for the organization. And last but not least, you of course, and we've heard that a lot throughout the webinar, is you have that improved governance and compliance. You enable your central IT to maintain consistent oversight of every request and API across all business units ensuring the adherence to group-wide guidelines, standards, and regulatory requirements. And this improved governance results in enhanced security, enhanced risk management and compliance, while still preserving the autonomy and flexibility of individual business units. So where do I go from here? Of course, you want to look at the greater picture. You don't want to just look at one business unit or just at your central IT. You want to look at your organization wide strategy, your API strategy and your API roadmap. And in the end, the question we want to ask is how mature is your API management? And for us, we've seen that it's essential to have this enterprise-wide API roadmap in place. And to help you dive deeper into this and to excel, we have developed the API maturity assessment, which can be found on our website. And I put a link just here. And of course, just go start right now. Um, go to our website and try out your PDA API control plan. It's really easy to set up and it's 30 days free. And if you need any help, we're always happy to help you set it up and you can just shoot us an email or LinkedIn or whatever you have. And if you would like to meet us in person, and we're always very happy to meet all of you in person, then the next 
possibility to do so is in New York for the API days in May. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and see you for the next series.